post going around of a white woman who had a baby and she was able to check into this, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a hotel, but it's not a hotel. It's a place where women who can afford to go and stay a week or two weeks or three weeks and get cared for and rest and sleep while the nurses take care of their babies. And so the comments with the Black woman is, this is so unfair because Black women cannot afford this. And a lot of the Black women who were saying they only get six weeks. And, you know, my comment is, well, did you choose a husband who could make you stay home for six months. You know, my job offered six weeks. As a matter of fact, I was one of the first mom that benefited from the six week because before they wouldn't give you any time and our union fight for it. But I took six months. You know why? Because of the husband I chose. A husband is a choice, ladies. There's a post going. Good morning, uh, beloved. So I got a lot of comments on that video. So I just wanted to talk about it. Um, a little bit. I think when it comes to healthcare, it is such a fascinating subject for us to discuss. And we know that healthcare is all about what you can pay for. <laughs> I feel bad saying that, but, but you know, um, I, I believe in universal health care. I think everybody should have health insurance, free health insurance. Now, granted, those of us live in the United States, you know, we are tax to the you know what. And this is 2024. The tax, uh, tr the Trump tax cuts are set to be over next year or in two years or something like that. So we don't know what's going to happen. Are we going to be taxed higher? Are we going up to 30%, 33%? Are we going to remain at where we are? Personally, I think I pay too much taxes. Now you get paid, you look at your check, half of it goes to taxes. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and so I personally believe everyone, especially in the greatest country in the world, in the United States, should have free health insurance. And of course, some people do. It's called Medicaid. Okay. I used to have Medicaid. It's the best insurance as a 16-year-old uh, teen mom, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. But knowing what I know now, I am happy that I pay for my health insurance. I've shared before that we pay, I pay about $800 a month for health insurance. And I think it's a scam if you ask me, <laughs> but you know, I, I'll pay for it because that's just, this is just the country we live in. Happy, happy Monday morning. I miss you guys yesterday. I was so exhausted yesterday talking about health insurance. I had to take little Michael to emergency room on Saturday because his breathing was just off. He was just having a hard time breathing. He's, he has really bad allergies and it affects his breathing. I took him to urgent care on Friday. Um, they give him a breathing treatment that I was already giving him. It did help some, but it just overnight Friday night, I was like, no, I had to take him to the hospital. And I took him to the hospital because it's right here by my house versus the urgent care up in Livingston. Uh, and that's about 30 minutes from my house. And because it was Saturday, you know, my daughter was home and she was going out and in the community, I didn't want to be too far from her. So I went to uh, the hospital, uh, which is next door. And so in talking about maternity leave, the video I saw, and I can't share because I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a commercial. It was posted in a group, a group of black women, black wives. And the, like I said, in the shorts, the woman, the black woman where this is not fear for black women because we can't afford it. But the thing is, that's a service she paid for. That's not free. She's, that's not coming out of her health insurance, right? Now, me personally, I'm like some of you in the comments. I don't want anybody caring for my child. When I had little Michael, I came home. I didn't even want my mama to come. My mother and I are not close, so maybe that has something to do with it. Um, I have other women in the church. They came by, they visit, but I didn't want anybody staying here because I just needed to be home alone with my child. 
And, um, you know, I took six months uh, at my job, which is back then it was, I'd say 90% women. We didn't have any maternity leave. There were no maternity leave at my job. If you had a baby, you either had to save your time or you have to go out with no pay. And a lot of the girls or women or wives, they could not afford to be out with no pay. I remember this one girl had a baby and she had to come back like in a week. C-section. She would lay underneath her desk. We had to help her to do her work because she had a C-section. She was in pain, but she had to come back to work. But you knew what, you know what she kept doing? She kept having babies for a husband who could not afford her the opportunity to stay home. Forget stay home with the baby you have regular. Stay home because you had C-section. No, no, no. She had to run back to work to clock in because she had to pay the bills. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and our union, we've been fighting, finally fight to get us six weeks. And I was one of the first mom in 2015 to get the six weeks maternity leave from the job. So now the girls, they can take the six weeks, they come right back. I took six months. You know why? For those of you in the comment talking about that has nothing to do with your husband. Yes, it does. That girl that came back after a week of having a, a C-section because her husband couldn't afford to pay the bills without her. Those girls who come back after a week or two weeks is because their baby daddies couldn't afford to miss a check. This one girl, like she had a baby, she left like Thursday to have a baby. By Wednesday, she was in the elevator. I said, did she just have a baby? <laughs> She was like, girl, you know my baby daddy ain't shit. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, your baby daddy ain't shit, but this is the second baby you're having for the no shit baby daddy. So yeah, it does have a chance, something to do with the man you choose. And for those of you women who are in your feelings, the Bible says, let the older woman teach the younger woman. We should teach the younger woman, baby. Do not make an emotional decision. This is why a husband is a choice. The only pregnancies we celebrate over here are ones created in the covenant of marriage. God honors marriage. We This is a Christian channel. We speak God words. We say what God words. Yes, we wish everybody well. I hope you have a, 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 a pregnancy. But when I talk about having a baby, I'm talking about having a baby in the covenant of marriage. One man, one woman. And I believe the best place for a child and children is in a happy, fulfilling, financially stable home with a mother and father married. Somebody comment, you don't need a man to have a baby in wherever. I, I say, uh, uh we don't do that here. I'm not on this channel. So for you older woman that's in your feelings, teach the younger woman. A part of choosing your husband, ladies, is the life you will have, the life he can afford you. Your husband is to afford you a comfortable life. The good life. And it's amazing to me in the comments, people talk about there ain't so much millionaire. Do you see how financially illiterate a lot of you are? It's like there is poverty and there's multimillionaire. I never once prayed for a multimillionaire when I was believing God for husband. What I prayed for was a husband that I can live comfortably on his income. And the guys that worked with me making 50000 I knew, I, I don't date people I work with anyways, guys I work with, but I, I knew, no, you can't afford to afford me a comfortable life. So when I went out to have my baby, I took six months. Thank you for the six weeks, but I'll see you in six months. 
As a matter of fact, my husband wanted me to stay home for a year. I didn't want to stay home for a year because I'm planning to retire early. And I understood that the longer I stayed out, it changes my seniority and it pushes back my retirement. And I'm not playing with my seniority. Seniority on my job is serious, girl. It's serious, okay? Senior, Jesus seniority, okay? <laughs> they say Hilton, blah, blah. I said, oh, so no, no, thank you. No, ma'am, I have seniority. You go talk to them young, them girls that just came up here. Me, Hilton, I, I, I got seniority. That's a power card on my job. We don't play with seniority at my job. <laughs> you don't mess with your seniority. And for those women that's in the other countries that you have, uh, you can stay home for six months. Congratulations. We're very happy for you. But here in the United States, that's not the country we live in. And somebody say, it's not about the husband, it's about the country you live in. No, it's not, because those countries could change anytime. Canada is crying about how expensive and how much taxes they're paying. We're crying about how much taxes we pay. As much as I believe in universal health care, that everybody should have free health insurance, I'm crying about the taxes we're paying now. And we don't know what's going to happen if, if the Trump tax cuts are go are we going to keep them? Are they going to be canceled? And we're going to go back to the tax rates that we were paying. And I was listening to somebody that says at one time, some time ago, they were paying 40% tax. Can you imagine? So even though some of, some of these countries have free health insurance, what are their taxes like? No, me personally, I think our health insurance is health in, in this country. Is a, it's, it's a freaking scam. When I had Lou Michael, I had a headache. I asked for Tylenol. When I got my bill, do you know how much the Tylenol was? $400. One Tylenol, they charge my insurance $400 nine years ago. No, you tell me why you're charging my health insurance $400 for freaking Tylenol. I've shared before, my husband's been working from home. He's back in the office now, but he was working from home. <clears throat> and he felt tightness in his chest. One thing I love about my husband, husband is a choice. He don't play with his health. It's one thing I love about him. He go to the doctor, he gets physical, he go to the dentist, he go to the hospital in a minute. He calls, he said, baby, I felt some tightness, I'm going to the hospital. Went to the hospital. I got to the hospital, ran tests, everything. Mr. Thompson, you're fine. Your your EKG was good. Your blood work was good. You're, you're healthy. Your blood pressure is a little high, but we understand you was rushing in here. We're going to redo it. Unfortunately, because of your demographics, uh, African-American male over 50, we have to keep you overnight. We said, okay, we know what's, that's what it is. Do you know how much they charge my insurance for my husband? Spending the night in the new in the new wing, $27,000 they charge my insurance. $27,000. When I took little Michael to, to urgent to the hospital, they had to do a, a CAT scan to make sure there's no damage because he's been coughing. I can't wait. I hear CAT scan at the hospital is like $10,000. $10,000. Do you also know that you you the, the way you're placed in the hospital in emergency room is based on your insurance? I never knew that. My husband had a procedure done on his knee last year. And when I went, you know, you drop him off and then you come back. And when I went, they say, oh, Mr. Thompson is in private room number one. Private room number one is all the way around to the front where the, the nurse's desk are. And there are all these empty rooms, but in the hallways, there are these makeshift rooms that's full of people and kids. Because, you know, kids have broken bones. Duh, duh, duh. And I'm looking, well, why are all these people in the hallway? But Mike, he's in, he's the only one in a room. So I asked the nurse, cute little nurse. I said, excuse me, ma'am, can I ask you a question? I said, why they have all the people in the hallway? Why, why they don't put them in the room? He said, their insurance don't pay for a room. 
Twice Mike had to go. And twice he's in the private room, number one, but everybody else is in the hallway. Why? Because their insurance do not pay for a private room. You get you get in the hallway, but your insurance pay for a room. When Mike had that chest, they went to the hospital and they saw the insurance card. They laughed and said, oh, you got some good insurance. No wonder they kept him. No, in all fairness, black man over 50, they need to keep him. It's a scam in this country. So something needs to be done for our health insurance. Now, my husband had to spend the night. Again, he's right in front of the nurse's office. My sister had a health issue. She had to go to the hospital. She's all the way in the back in a double room because of her insurance. Now, personally, I think everybody should be treated fairly, especially when it comes to insurance. And I'm sure the doctors are doing everything. Da, 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 da. So Saturday, when I took little Michael, they're trying to do this test. No, you're not going to do a COVID test and a flu shot test. No, he just did one yesterday. It was negative. I took it to urgent care yesterday. It was negative. But we need to do it again, Miss Thompson. No, we don't. Oh, we need to do a strep throat. No, ma'am. The doctor did their urgent care. The test didn't come back yet. But we need to do it again. No, we don't. See, I know the game. And our union tell us unless you are dying, do not call an ambulance. You're dying, don't call an ambulance. Unless you're dying, don't go to the urgent to hospital. Go to urgent care. Our health insurance, to me, is a scheme. Something needs to be, need to be done where health coverage and health insurance is concerned. There is no reason they're charging me nine years ago, little Michael, just turned nine, $400 for one little Tylenol. You could go to the CVS and buy a box of Tylenol for $5. Why are they charging my insurance card $27,000 for my husband to spend the night in the hospital? Wait till little Michael bill come. I'm gonna show y'all how much they charge for that room he was in as a matter of fact, they call five of us at one time. You stay here. You two go in there. You two go in here. But Michael Thompson, you come. You, Michael Lou, Michael Thompson, was right in front of the nurse's office again. So when we talk about health care and maternity leave, something needs to be done with where our health coverage is concerned. A Tylenol does not cost $400. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I forgot about our copay. You go to urgent care, you go to private, or a doctor, you go to a specialist, our copay is $10. It used to be $5. Those were the good old days. At the hospital, it's $75. I thought it was $70. I'm going to check my handbook when I get to the office. She charged me $75. They swiped my husband flex account. $75. And you know you're not seeing a real doctor. It's the, it's the PA that see you. And then the doctor come and tell you, oh, the PA stand there and tell, you know, they have to practice and stuff. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. We all have to practice. But something needs to be done. Now, are we willing to pay for higher taxes for free health insurance? I, 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 I can't, girl. I, I, I don't. Me and Mike, we're not at the highest tax bracket, but we're almost there. And if the tax trap tax cuts are re are are canceled and the regular tax cut, we're gonna be up there. And I'm already crying now about how much taxes we pay. And 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 property taxes. And there's a beautiful home my realtor just sent me. Beautiful, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. But ain't nobody gonna be paying sixteen thousand dollars a year starting out for taxes. I'm not doing that. And this is the house that I want to leave for my children. If anything happens to me and my, the kids are good and going to be paying by then maybe $30,000 a year in taxes. 
So we want changes, y'all, but are we willing to pay for it? Are we willing to pay those higher taxes? You know, they're saying we're not going to have uh, uh, Social Security. My husband will get it. He's about a few years from retirement. I might get half of it. I'm retiring at 52, but in the United States, you can't start pulling your SSI till 62. So I will be retired 10 years before I can start pulling my Social Security. Granted, because of my husband, um, you know, depend whatever age I still pull my my SSI is fine, but because of my husband, if my husband transitioned before me, I will get his social security. So I'm going to be good regardless. But if they're saying for me, I'm 46, we might get half of our social security and people are depending on social security. That means by the time Lexi age and Michael age, there might not be any social security. So what do we have to do, black people and all people, but especially black people, is we have to come up with the plan. See, when I was in school, we were taught, you're not gonna get no social security. So you need to come up with different ways to save for retirement other than depending on your social security, which is why I can retire at 52. And, and those six months I took off from work, it's not quite six months. I have to buy my time back. When COVID happened, for those of you who say it has nothing to do with your husband, I was home for six months during COVID. Was you home? My husband was like, write the letter. The day they sent us home, my husband said, write the letter. I was home for six months with my babies. Why? My husband does not depend on me financially. So I was able to stay home six months during the first year of COVID with my children to transition them through finishing the year, so on and so forth. So yes, it does depend on your husband. And this is why I yell, scream, and go hard on YouTube just about every day to encourage young women to choose your husband wisely. Think it through. It is not an emotional decision only. Do you want to have emotions? Yes. Do you want to be sexually attracted to him? Yes. But baby, can he afford to provide for you and protect you? Can he afford to give you the good life? And the good life does not mean he's a millionaire. My husband's not a millionaire. My husband makes a regular executive income. Granted, he is a high earner. He's an executive. That's the income he makes. I never prayed, thought of, wanted a millionaire. Because I didn't need, he didn't need to have a millionaire income for us to live a comfortable life. And we live way below our means. We can afford to live here. We live here. Everybody's crying about everything is expensive. And it is. Okay, we just move up a little bit. We live in a very modest home. I chose a modest home. My husband could get a $500,000 home 11 years ago. I got a two fifty dollars house. All the girls driving around in Benz, Lexuses, Beamers. We have one American truck. But guess what? Our retirement? Girl. My husband, he he don't he can wait until the max age to pull his social security. And he'll be retired before then. So we have to come up with a plan. We cannot depend on the government to make a comfortable life for us. Yes, with laws, so on and so forth, but we can't sit down in the United States and save the country. If the United States care about humanity and we know they do, they would give us free health insurance. Well, they do not. So what, what's your plan? You're going to go back to work in six weeks? Even six weeks, I think, is not enough. You need at least, mamas, you need at least three months to stay home with your babies. 
<clears throat> As a matter of fact, the daycares around here, they don't, they don't take the baby until the baby is, is three months. I don't know if they've changed. But I know for little Michael, the daycares, they didn't take him. They uh, it's, it's three months. They, they don't take him at six weeks. It's three months. And do you really want to be leaving your baby at three months at a daycare to go back to work because your man, your baby daddy can't afford for you to stay home for three months? Young ladies, hear he, hear he, your cousin, auntie, sister, Janice. I know what I'm talking about. Choose wisely. A husband is a choice. That means you must think it through. The husband you choose will determine the rest of your life. The woman that had to run back to work after a week, two weeks, six weeks, is because their husbands or baby daddies could not afford for them to stay home at least three months. Because those men are not able to carry their family financially. Or, and you guys did not save. But again, the husband you choose. And a lot of people are financially illiterate. Most Americans live paycheck to paycheck. I don't know how they do it. I mean, I get anxiety just thinking about it. I have anxiety. Like, oh, girl. The paycheck to paycheck. But anyways, I have to go. Let me know what you think. I absolutely love you. I adore you. Come on back. I have another video for you to make up for you from yesterday. Love you. Listen, thank you for those of you showing me love and support with my books on Amazon. I love you. Remember to leave a glowing five-star review for me. I absolutely adore you. Talk to you later. Bye.